Welcome to the Sustainability Nugget Podcast. I am Rara Sue Maraibi. And I'm Tosin Fadorosho. On this podcast, we learn about sustainability by discussing various related topics while focusing on three pillars, the economy, the society, and the environment. Hi, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another episode of the Waste series on the Sustainability Nuggets podcast. On this series, we have been talking about business opportunities in the waste management industry. And one major area for business opportunities in this industry is waste to energy process. Barasu will lead this discussion today because she is well-versed in this topic. Thank you, Tracy. So on this episode, guys, we will be discussing what exactly the waste energy means, um, the global market size, why it's important in our world today, the different types of waste energy process available, um, the favorable government policies supporting this process, and um, existing waste energy companies around the world. We'll also be touching on um, opportunities um, available in the waste energy industry. Yeah. So can you define what waste to energy is about? Yeah, so waste energy is uh, simply a process of energy recovery, or you can see it as a technique of um, generating energy in the form of heat or um, electricity and even gaseous um, and liquid fuels from the primary treatment of waste. So um, in our first episode on this waste series, which was building a million dollar business from um, waste management, we mentioned that the global waste management market is currently valued at $1.6 trillion as of 2020. Remember, let us sink in again. So now coming, yeah, so now coming to the waste energy uh, market, um, the waste energy market was valued at $35 billion as of um, 2019, and it's projected to reach about $52 billion by 2028, growing at an annual growth rate of 5.2% throughout the forecast period of 2020-2030. So do you know why it's growing at such an such a rate? Yeah, there are, there are several reasons, and um, I'm, I'm just going to highlight some of these reasons. So one major one is the fact that there's an increase in domestic and industrial uh, waste disposal globally, right? Um, and with this increase, there's also a decrease in landfill capacities, which is also leading to an increase in tipping fields. So it's, it's, it's more expensive for you to dispose your waste mm-hmm. in landfills, right? Um, yeah. And like, if you look at the US, for example, the US has witnessed a decline in its number of landfills over the past few years, and it's expected to emerge as one of the largest, like the largest waste generating country. So okay, that's so, yeah, okay. so that means like the U.S. is expected to generate more waste, but we don't have spaces. We don't have enough spaces to actually keep dumping that waste in. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And um, another reason is the fact that um, there's green energy demands from um, the end use sector. So can you explain what the end use sector is? So by end use sector, we're talking about like the transportation, industrial, commercial, and residential sectors, um, because these are the primary consumers of um, energy, um, mainly in the form of electricity, right? Okay. And so with this green demand, like green waste disposal, green energy demand, there's also a rise in Um, the environmental concerns regarding increasing carbon emissions from the usage of conventional fuels, that's fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And um, with this concern, it has led to more countries opting for cleaner and um, more efficient sources of power generation. Um, So waste energy has emerged as one of the viable solutions for countries to, to meet their carbon reduction targets and be able to switch to um, cleaner energy technologies. Um, so another reason is the fact that there's really technological advancement in energy recovery um, to improve the output efficiency of waste to energy plants. Mm-hmm. 
With all of these reasons combined, um, it has led to the creation of favorable regulatory policies, encouraging proper waste disposal combined with um, energy production. And so because there are favorable policies from the government and um, there are major market players like companies that are actually converting this waste into energy, it is actually strengthening um, the growth of this industry. Okay, and that's, so that's really the reason for the, the increased growth. Yeah. So can you give exact examples of those favorable government policies? Yeah, so there are several government policies across different regions um, mm. that are implementing these technologies. Well, like the major regions implementing technologies are, are in North America, the Asia Pacific, and um, Europe. So let's come to North America first. Um, in the United States, um, there are several federal laws and um, regulations that govern renewable um, energy grid interconnection. So um, some of these laws are the Federal Power Act, and this um, act gives federal author uh, um, authority over electric utilities. We have mm -hmm. the Public Utility Regulatory Policy Act um, that mandates utilities to buy electricity from qualifying facilities. So mm -hmm. it's thereby introducing competitions into wholesale power markets, right? Um, okay. And the Energy Policy Act enables electricity um, generators to participate in wholesale power markets free from security and exchange commission supervi um, supervision. Um, the Public Utility Regulatory Policy Act also offers the way for small non-utility generators to enter the market, including um, renewable energy developers. So apart from this was all in the United States, but in Canada, mm -hmm. Canada has also set a target of increasing the share of zero emitting sources to about 90% by 2030, mm -hmm. right? So this, this is actually pushing for cleaner sources of energy to enter into the market. Does that mean, so you said that um, the... Public Utility Regulatory Policy Act mandates utilities to buy electricity from qualifying facilities. So do you mean that the waste to energy plants would be a part of the qualifying facilities? Yes, because um, these are um, low carbon emitting sources, right? And they are mandating these utility companies to actually purchase, purchase power from, from um, low carbon emitting um, generators. So yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. That 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 act actually makes it possible for the waste energy generators to actually sell their energy to the grid in order to um, be part of the elect, um, grid mix, the energy grid mix in okay. in a region. Yeah. Okay. In Europe, when you come to Europe, um, in Europe there are direct subsidies, carbon tax, and landfill taxes. Uh, to waste energy plants, and this is likely um, going to help drive the regional market over the um, forecast period, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if, if I should explain that, like, since there's carbon tax, it becomes more expensive to use fossil fuels, landfill yeah. tax it becomes expensive to just throw your um, waste into the landfill. So it, the, 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 this policy is making it... Um, favorable for businesses and even individuals to send their waste to waste energy plants yeah um in the asia pacific region there's increased government funding for um, municipal solid waste management along with growing awareness regarding um, the waste to energy plants across various economies such as india singapore indonesia and um, thailand and is bound to drive the regional market growth. Um, in India specifically, the government has undertaken various initiatives for managing urban and industrial waste as it has faced um, a large number of pu public health um, incidents um, associated with soil and water pollution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we know why this industry is growing more because of favorable um, government policies, which is also an effect of the fact that uh, we are renting out out of space of, for landfills. And, you know, it's interesting how you brought up the case with India where um, there's a public health crisis because of 
mismanaged waste. Mm -hmm. um, but what, so for this industry, what are the benefits of adopting waste to energy processes? Because there are definitely other ways of waste management, right? But what benefits exist with converting waste to energy? Yeah, so I'm going to go according to the report from the Environmental Protection Agency. So the United mm -hmm. States Environmental Protection Agency um, actually reported that there's a one ton reduction in greenhouse gas emission um, for every ton of solid waste process in waste energy facilities. So what this means basically is the fact that waste to energy plant um, reduces a significant amount of um, harmful emissions owing to several factors, even including um, recovery of metals for recycling because and in waste energy plant, they actually do recover uh, metals. Um, okay. So it's, it's also like when you generate energy from yeah. waste, it offsets the carbon dioxide from fossil fuel power generation. So when you are using the energy or the electricity that generated from waste, you're not using the electricity from fossil fuel and that's offsetting yeah. that um, carbon emission. And so there's mm -hmm. also the avoidance of methane from landfills because you are diverting your waste from landfills. You're not sending them to landfills. So methane mm -hmm. is not being generated there. Instead is in the waste energy plant where it's captured and used for energy generation. Okay. And so, me, like I said before, we are also still running out of space from landfill. So it's important that you find a way to divert that waste to somewhere it can be useful. And waste energy process is really a reliable waste management solution. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm really, um, I think I really like the part where we are not, we are addressing the problem with dumping waste in the landfill. We can't keep creating more space for landfills when they, we can actually, you know, find better solutions. One of which is the waste to energy process. So, can you tell us more about this process or processes? What are they? Yeah, yeah. On the basis of technology, which is like the way they there, um, like the global waste energy market, waste energy market is divided into the thermal and the um, biochemical technology. There's also a sector called the others, but these are the two main thermal and biochemical. So um, the thermal technology is actually the um, the largest segment, like in the old waste to um, energy market, and it really um, involves recycling energy from municipal solid waste at mm -hmm. high temperature. So it includes different processes such as combustion, which is also known as incineration, there's gasification and paralysis. So these are the three major types of uh, um, the thermal technology for waste to energy process. And the okay. major difference um, between this type, um, the three types of technologies I just called is the amount of um, oxygen that's supplied and the um, temperature um, of the process. So Okay. Due to like the difference in oxygen and temperature levels, it leads to different um, end products. So in some, it can just lead to um, CO2 and water, whereas okay. the other, like based on the temperature, it can produce some in intermediate um, um, useful products. So in terms of um, gaseous or liquid combustible, um, okay. products. So the thermal technology, um, like the thermal segment of this waste energy market, occupied um, the largest revenue share of 82.4% in 2019. And incineration um, was the major contributor to this revenue growth. So I can just go like just highlight what incineration is, gasification is, and uh, yeah. Par paralysis. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, incineration is really a method of waste disposal that involves the combustion of waste. So when I talk about combustion of waste, you are literally just burning the waste. There is yeah. oxygen involved. So you can incineration is a waste waste management method on its own where you burn um, waste. But now you can um, recover energy from that process if you use a proper incinerator where 
it burns the waste and it eats steam and um, water that turns into steam and drives a generator to um drives a turbine to produce electricity so, so this is different from like you know there's open hair burning it's also i think it's also called incineration where you're just like burning but you're not recovering anything mm-hmm. yes. from the process yes and that's even the open air burning is is an hazard to the environment right yeah right so but incineration it, it's better to say incineration with energy recovery right mm-hmm. because that you're not just um doing it in an open air situation it's in a confined space it's in a confined space is in is in an incinerator yeah with, that has um energy recovery attached to it that's the the, the steam components the turbine mm-hmm. component and like a generator that generates electricity and in in proper incinerator plants there's also like emissions control so the emissions that comes from the burning doesn't just go into the atmosphere it's a closed system so okay. it goes into the emission control where um effluents are absorbed and just clean um gas is released afterwards okay. yeah so that's that's incineration basically combustion um when we look at gasification um gasification is a technological process that can convert any carbon-based um, raw materials but in this sense we're looking at waste biomass right um, mm-hmm. gasification is also used for for coal but we're concentrating on waste and uh, waste biomass here so it converts um the carbon-based raw materials into um fuel gas and it's usually known as syngas so syngas is co2 and synthesis. hydrogen yeah it synthesis gas but it contains co and hydrogen which can be used for either electricity generation or it can be used to produce like liquid fuel like it's a building block for energy like energy products right okay. so that, that's what what happens here so this gasification it occurs like um in with limited oxygen and what okay. so on like incineration where there's like excess o- oxygen this like it's like a controlled process where um they feed it um oxygen and steam to generate okay. the um the products they want okay another major difference from incineration is like apart from the lesser of oxygen used it's does it go through higher temperature and pressure than incineration Yes, it happens in a in in a unit known as the gasifier, and it okay. occurs at a certain high temperature and high pressure environment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, what about pyrolysis? So, uh, for pyrolysis, the um, it's also it's also a thermal like treatment, right? Um, mm-hmm. But with par with pyrolysis, there's actually biomass pyrolysis. And plastic paralysis. So plastic can actually go through paralysis. Biomass can go through paralysis. Um, the, the main difference between paralysis and gasification is that paralysis occurs in an inert environment. So um, okay. o- oxygen is not um, allowed into that environment, into the paralysis chamber. Okay. Um, so it occurs in an inert environment at high temperature and pressure. So at the end of the day, in paralysis, you you get um, a liquid product, uh, like you get a, like gaseous products that can be condensed into liquid products, while some gases remain in gas um, gas form. So, um, okay. but the main product here is the paralysis oil, also known as the bio oil. Um, on the on the channel and the podcast previously, I've made a video that demonstrated. Um, conversion of plastic to oil through paralysis and i also interviewed a uh, ceo of naka industries which is a company that converts um, plastic to oil using paralysis so if you're interested you can always check out those episodes yeah so the methods we have discussed so far are just for thermal technologies am i right mm-hmm. yeah so what's the other technology um, in the waste energy process. Yeah, so the other the other um, technology is the biological technology, and like there are different 
ways in which waste can be converted into energy through this technology. So there's the landfill gas recovery, which just involves capturing landfill gas from landfills. Right? And landfill gas is a product of the anaerobic decomposition of the organic components in municipal okay. solid waste disposed in landfills. So this in, in the industry, this is like, like they they categorize this as a sector on its own, different from anaerobic digestion. But honestly, landfill gas is, is literally just biogas from landfill. So it actually um, comes from the anaerobic decomposition in landfill. But there's also like it, it's also segmented, like another segment is known as the anaerobic digestion segment, right? Because um, in the anaerobic digestion segment, they actually use digesters. So they build digesters or waste water treatment plants um, and provide like an anaerobic um, um, environment for mm -hmm. waste to convert it to biogas. So anaerobic okay. just means without oxygen oxygen right so yeah. the difference between landfill recovery and the anaerobic digestion well i wouldn't say the difference i think yeah the difference would be the location so like yes the waste is already in the landfill and then you're just yeah. capturing the gas so yes. we talked about how methane how when um you know waste is dumped into landfill over time it emits methane right so landfill gas recovery is just like capturing that methane instead of allowing it to escape into the atmosphere mm -hmm. but for anaerobic digestion like they actually build plants that yeah. have anaerobic digesters right so they have to design it. yes they mm -hmm. have to design anaerobic digesters um and design a whole process of, of how to feed um the digester system how to um, collect the gas from it and some in some um anaerobic digestion systems they also convert um their waste product or the effluents to fertilizers mm -hmm. okay right? so there's a old system so um for the anaerobic digestion so in the anaerobic digestion sector they can um have specific waste streams so they can convert food waste to biogas or they can convert animal droppings to biogas or mm -hmm. um get biosolid from wastewater treatment plants and convert okay. to biogas so that's so that's why it's into to landfill gas recovery and anaerobic digestion. Yeah. Right. So there's also fermentation. Um, fermentation is on, also another um, process that falls on that bi biological uh, technology. And it is a metabolic process that produces chemical changes in organic substrates through the action of enzyme. So okay. to understand it better from fermentation, is where you get ethanol, hydrogen gas, and you can also get more enzymes for it. So just think about how alcohol is actually manufactured, right? So yeah. you, you have to ferment um, mm -hmm. carbohydrates to get um, alcohol. Ethanol is an alcohol, but it's yeah. a chemical-based um, alcohol. Um, so yeah, that's where the fermentation comes in. And so in, the, in this waste content, co um, content, we'll be looking at fermentation of waste biomass so mm -hmm. we're not just um and we are not converting to alcohol <laughs> we are converting to fuels for energy right yeah it's an alcohol but we feel great alcohol no but i mean like alcohol not, that we drink <laughs> yeah 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 we're not converting to food grade alcohol but mm -hmm. fuel, we're converting to fuel grade um yeah. like energy grade alcohol yeah so the the last technology is really like a combination of some of the technologies and it's known as mechanical biological treatment. Um, so that's the MBT system. So this mm -hmm. system is a type of waste processing facility that combines a sorting facility with a form of biological treatment, such as composting or anaerobic digestion. So uh, when, if, if a company adopts this, this um, method, right? Mm -hmm. They collect, they just collect a mixed stream of waste and okay. in their facility, it goes through sorting where they are picking up metals, picking up recyclables oh, okay. and, and just um, separating um, the organic components that will probably get um, 
like if they can actually bring out organic components, maybe it can go to composting or it can go to anaerobic digestion. Why some others, okay. if it still makes it goes into incineration. So is it it's just a facility that combines everything. So you don't need to physically sort everything in their process. Um, it sorts and just puts everything in their right um, place, basically. Okay, so you are pre-treating the waste, like you are, should I say, so in that same facility, like you are pre-sorting and then, um, yeah, you are pre-sorting the waste for, she collects household waste, she pre-sorts it, and then it goes into like, what depending on what kind of organic yeah. waste it is. But because they've it combined it, it's called a system, so they are not doing it separately, or not, like yeah. it's already in the whole system. So you so don't think about like, it. You have to think about it like maybe waste management truck brings mixed sort of waste and just puts in this in this mm -hmm. MBT system and there's like a conveyor belt with magnets or yeah like and density separator or something mm -hmm. that separates metals and separates the ones that will float or fall and like the end stream based on what they have attached to it, right? Can be an anaerobic digestion digester for just organics. Okay. Yeah, okay. system, yeah. Okay. Or composting. So this, because it's MBT, it has to be a bio, like combined with a biological um, stuff that's either it's composting different. or anaerobic. But the most common ones are just combined with incineration. So when they when they sort out whatever they can sort that they just burn the rest. Yeah, okay, right? okay, yeah. okay. So the non-organic components are burned. Are those the ones that are burned? No, I'm saying like in the regular situation, the more popular situation, that sorting okay. stuff is there, but they don't sort and it. Then it's yeah, they don't sort it to the level where they just bring up biological parts, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so but in the MBT, they have to bring out the organic parts to put it in a biological treatment. So okay. their sorting has to be detailed. Whatever mm -hmm. system they have has to be detailed enough to, to bring out the biological part. So earlier you had mentioned that of the two types of um, waste to energy technologies that we have, the thermal process is the most popular, right? And you said incineration is like out of, so we have under thermal processes, we have incineration, we have gasification and paralysis and incineration is still the most popular. And um, on that, so some examples of waste to energy companies that mostly um, practice incineration include waste management, um, Anergia, Covanta and Covanta Energy Corporation. So are there other examples of companies that, do something else apart from the thermal process. Yeah, like most of most of there are lots of companies, but most of them actually do the incineration, like they just incinerate and convert to electricity. Mm -hmm. Some of them is like a combination of processes. For example, the waste management you talked about also produce renewable natural gas. Okay. Um, like they capture landfill gas and convert it into renewable yeah, natural yeah. gas. Okay. Um, um Anija, um, beyond um, the clean energy they are pro providing, they also like create fertilizers from it and recycled water. So like they have, what I'm trying to say is that they do multiple things more most of the mm -hmm. time. But like mm -hmm. incineration is usually like just like the, the major. really easiest part. Yeah. Um, so um, it's difficult to find like other companies doing like the other stuff. They are companies, but they are not like really popular but one i've seen is the blue fire renewables um and that's that company actually um carry out fermentation so they use a they have a patent on concentrated acid hydrolysis technology okay. where they convert um cellulosic waste materials so those waste materials also known as green waste materials um okay. to ethanol so that falls on that fermentation, like yeah. in the biological part. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about that kind of industries previously. Um, yeah. Those ones carry out paralysis right. or plastic, pl plastic paralysis. Um, I found a company called Splenex Ecosystems. Well, what they do is actually um, design the paralysis plant. 
So you can okay. buy the paralysis plant from them and then okay. operate um your like operate this the the system of converting either plastic or biomass to oil. Yeah. So but there are a lot oh. and we cannot we cannot talk about all of them here. We can even talk about own biogas that comes yeah. food waste to biogas. So there, there, mm-hmm. there, are, lot, there mm-hmm. are a lot of them. Yeah. So it looks like there's still this sector is growing definitely and there's um room for opportunity or a chance for you know people to still come into the sector and you know, make great businesses out of it. Mm-hmm. So what are the current opportunities available and like are there um are there certain challenges that is impeding the growth of these other sectors, like the biological sectors, for example? Um, so let's start with the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look at the opportunities, you want to look at the whole supply chain, pricing supply chain, like looking at the different sections yeah. that are needed in the waste energy process, right? Um, before you can convert waste to energy, be it thermal or biological, you need to design the technology for mm-hmm. it. So that's a market space on its own, design the incinerators, the gasifiers, the parallel. Um, paralysis chambers, the anaerobic digesters, the um, fermentation tanks. That yeah. that's a sector on its own. Um, if you're really technical, if you're into engineering designs, that's some something you can look at to see if you can help design um, plants for different regions. Right? Yeah. So that's that's one opportunity. Then another opportunity is in the collection and the sorting of waste. One reason why incineration is really very popular is the fact that it can just accept mixed mm, mixed waste, yeah. right? And so they don't need to be pre-treating and sorting. They can just treat well, everything, yeah. yeah, into the into the incinerator um, chamber. Um, and so that's like something impeding the other other types of technology because they need. Um, specific waste streams, for example, anaerobic digest digester. You cannot put mixed waste into it; to, it, it would destroy the yeah. the um, biological process, right? Mm-hmm. So, in order for anaerobic digestion to grow, you really need um, sorting of the waste to make sure that only pure streams are entering. So, um, even with the paralysis and the gasifiers. They need specific waste streams. So there's really need, um, there's like a lot of opportunity in that collection and certain um, side of things, especially for companies that do not have the MBT, like we talked about, like yeah. all of the machineries, they need um, that intermediate help to mm-hmm. sort waste and give them pure waste streams. So that's yeah. an opportunity that people can dive into and i've seen this a lot in plastics like uh different people like different companies that that work on plastic waste most of them actually just solve the problem of collecting and sorting before they give it to to the recycling company so you can Mm -hmm. see that in every every part of it not just plastic you can become a collection and sorting company for bio biomass you can Mm -hmm. do that for metal and all um and so the the last opportunity I'll say is the operation of the technology itself. Yes, we see that it's growing, but the regions that we talked about is really just North America, um, Asia, Pacific, and Europe. Um, yeah. We have other parts of the world that really need this technology. So you can look at what is being done in these areas and implement it in your own um, region. But even in this region that has been implemented, the, the more is needed because um, waste that is being generated, only a very few percent is being converted into energy. So why is, why is that? So there's a um, need for expansion of this industry. So we need more people actually carrying out the operations of these technologies. So the um, I think for regions like Africa, there's the where the waste management sector is relatively still growing like there's um should I say there's little in most in some countries there's little or no waste management systems existent so collection and sorting of waste is it's time consuming definitely it's labor intensive but um 
if if we can combine the technology aspect, like you're actually automating the process of sorting the waste, then it'd be easy to set up this like um waste to energy plant because you already have like you have a you have the middle um man man yeah you have the middle man that will be doing the collection and sorting and then the technologies are being made available yeah definitely so yeah um not that not to extend this episode we're going to end here there are a lot of things to go deep into the different industries what's actually going on in those industries so yeah. but like in future episodes we'll be diving into the specific waste energy industries like the anaerobic digestion industry the paralysis industry incineration and gasification to really understand their successes and their shortcomings we had mentioned when we started this way series that this this series is going to be a long series, but um, we hope that you are actually gaining and learning something from it. So um, we hope you stay with us till the end of this series and maybe <laughs> you would have started a business or you would be, I guess, inspired to start a business. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, stay tuned and subscribe to our podcast. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Sustainability Nuggets podcast. I am Rarisu Maribi. And I am Tosin Falaransho. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a rating and review on wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also show your support by signing up for a small donation to help sustain future episodes. You can find all relevant links in the description. See you in our next episode.